Hello everyone. Today's video, we are going to be touching upon the second filter, which are inductors. Inductor is a passive element designed to store energy in its magnetic field. And an inductor in the physical world simply consists of a coil like this of conducting wire. So this is our wire and this is our coil. And through this, current is passing by through this wire and also a voltage is generated and finally magnetic field is stored uh, along uh, this uh, coil so essentially gonna look like this and I'm gonna draw this in pencil so I don't screw it up Simply, when there's more current passing by, when there's more and more and more current, more flux lines like these are going to be drawn apart here, indicating that the inductor is storing more energy. Now, in electrical engineering, when we solve electric circuit problems, we are going to have to deal with determining what the voltage across this inductor is or determining what the current is flowing through it. If you want to determine what the voltage is, we can define that as an equation. And that equation would be this. Voltage is equal to the inductance, which is in Henry, Henritz, times the change in current over time. And if you want to find the current, the current is simply equal to 1 over the inductance integral from the initial time to the time that you want to s a track at of the function of voltage of time constant plus the initial function of the current. Now, the question is, what defines inductance? What are the characteristics, or specifically the physical characteristics, that define inductance? Well, there are four properties. The first property is the type of material the coil consists. So I'm just going to draw it right here, write it down right here. The first characteristic is the core material. The second thing is the cross-sectional area of that coil how large, how wide that coil is wrinkled. So cross-sectional area, and that would simply be this uh, part. The third characteristic is the number of turns in the coil. So if we have more turns, then the inductance is greater. It's able to store more energy. So number of turns. And finally, the length of the coil also matters.
So this length, how long this coil is stretching out. And we can combine all these four characteristics to determine the ability for the inductor to store energy in its magnetic field. And that equation is simply defined as n square, the number of turns, times the permeability of the core, so it's simply the core material, times the cross-sectional area, A, divided by the length. And that's it. Moving on. Now we are going to determine how is the voltage and current going to behave in a graph in an AC in AC mode. And I just want to clarify that inductor acts as a short circuit when it is in DC mode. So we don't need to touch upon direct current mode anymore. We'll just continue on with alter alternate alternate current mode. So let's just draw the voltage form, uh, voltage waveform first. And we're going to label here in the middle as 180 degrees. Here, 90 degrees. Right here, 270 degrees. And all the way to the end here, 360 degrees. And I'm just going to draw the voltage waveform. This is how it's going to look like. And then we're going to draw the degrees right here as well. And now the question is, how is the current going to behave? Well, simply, uh, with an inductor, current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. So this is how the current is going to look like if the voltage behaves like this. Moving on. Now here we have an electric circuit, but we don't have it in AC mode. We have it in a pulse waveform mode. And here the question is, how is the current going to behave when we have an inductance uh, in the circuit and how is the light bulb going to behave as well? Well, for one, since current is passing through this coil, the coil is going to store energy uh, in its magnetic field. So essentially, there's going to be a delay be, uh, since it has a time constant uh, in part of inductance. So it's not going to behave like this, like where uh, since the voltage suddenly instantaneously goes up to this value, the current is not going to behave like that. It's not going to instantaneously change. It's going to gradually change very greatly until it reaches a, a plateau all the way here into the end because filter is not constant and it's storing energy and vice versa so this is how the current is going to look like now at this point the voltage drops down back to zero so all that energy that the inductance have is essentially going to be released so the current is essentially going to go down, all the way down, back to zero, uh, at, a sm at a slower rate. So it's going to be like this. And then the voltage repeats. Uh, it has its, uh, goes through its second cycle, and then, its, and then its third cycle. And then the current's going to behave very much the same. And this is how the current's going to behave. Now, the next question is, how is the light bulb going to behave? The light bulb is not going to turn on instantaneously as what the voltage is. It's going to follow how the current is behaving. So it's not going to instantaneously bright up 
but it's going to gradually write up and then at the point when the voltage is zero again it then suddenly not instantaneously but gradually uh, dims back uh, to its default state and then repeats over and over again and this is just the groundwork of how inductors work I hope you guys learned enough to know how this bad boy works and I will see you guys in the near future. If you guys haven't checked out the other filter video, I highly recommend you guys checking it out. Thank you.